Hi, and welcome to the 10-minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on December 10th, 2017. My name is Don Bold. I'm the pastor of the church. For the next 10 minutes, I'd like to share with you just some of the highlights of this morning's message. Uh, sorry I missed last week. We had a crazy busy week, and it just got so late in the week before I had time to do it that I thought, well, we'll just forego it and move to this one. So we've been doing this series on spiritual warfare and on resisting the devil, and basically it's from James 4, 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Uh, that's our banner scripture for a fairly long series that we're doing on just what it means to be submitted to God and now uh, what it means to resist the devil. And we've gotten as far as Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 through 15, and uh, we're talking about uh, the armor of God, okay? And the specific thing we're going to be looking at today is the breastplate of righteousness. But I'd like to just to start with a, a, just a quick intro to this, that we need to understand and apply what this passage is talking about before we apply the metaphor, the metaphor being the armor, okay? Sometimes we can get so lost in the metaphor that we actually kind of miss what it was, was the subject matter. And so Ephesians six thirteen through 15 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, Put on the full armor of God. So, first of all, to understand, it's not your strength again. Uh, and we are to put on the full armor of God. And the word that's being used here, and it's used in several other contexts in uh, the New Testament, uh, means to sink into it, you know, to, to settle into the armor, okay? And uh, so it says that we should do that so that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. All right. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up. Now, this, this one means to receive, receive it. And all of this is uh, in a tense in the original Greek, and I'm told this, I'm not a Greek scholar, uh, that is very urgent. It is like, do it now. All right. So therefore, take up the full armor of God that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm Having uh, stand firm, therefore, having uh, your uh, having girded your loins with truth. We talked about that last week and about how important the truth is uh, in this warfare. That uh, you know we are being attacked, uh, you know, by spiritual forces that that are against us. You know, those thoughts and these crazy things that just keep coming against you again and again and again. Sometimes we just have a way to say, "Oh, that's just my thinking," you know. But sometimes it's more than your thinking. Sometimes it's inspired by, or maybe just opportunely uh, taken advantage of, you know, by something deeper. And so the truth of God is, is what we use in response to that, to, to protect ourselves from those lies, all right? And it says, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Just real quickly, there's some words that are used here that, that bring another level of metaphor here. Take up, put on, gird up. You know, and these words basically mean to receive, to clothe yourself, to sink into it, okay, and to fasten on so that things don't come off. Trust me, in battle, you don't want your armor coming off, you don't want uh, your weaponry falling off of you, okay? You want, you want those things securely attached to you. And so it's saying these things are things that we, we uh, have to really, you know, grab a hold of and settle into. There's, some, there's action we need to take in order for these things to be effective for us. Romans 13, uh, verse 14 says this, put on the Lord Jesus, Okay, same word for put on. Put on the Lord Jesus. Maybe what this is talking about as far as the armor of God is putting on Jesus Christ. Put in, it says make no provision for the flesh. Ephesians 4.24, put on the new self, uh, which is in the likeness of God and has been created in, listen, this righteousness and the holiness of truth. So again, we have righteousness and truth uh, side by side here, just like in the armor of God. And again, we're being told to put on the new self and put on Jesus Christ to put on the armor of God. And I think these are different analogies for pretty much the same thing. And I think these analogies provide insight for us, you know, to receive, to fasten, to sink into the armor. And I, this is more than a morning exercise, okay? Uh, this is equipping for, for the day, for life, okay? And in Ephesians 6.14, it tells us, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So let's have a quick talk about what exactly this righteousness is, okay? Because there's two parts to this righteousness. First of all, to understand, we are not righteous. Romans 3, 10 through 12 says, there is none righteous, not even one. There's nobody who understands. They don't seek God. We, we've turned aside. We're all together become useless. There's none that does good. There's not even one, okay? And that was the condition that Jesus was the answer for, all right? Was that, that was the condition. That's not saying that's how we should be now. It's saying that, you know, we needed Christ because of it. There are, there are people in the world who believe that, that uh, we are not sinners, okay? So therefore, if we're not sinners, we don't need a Savior. And so they don't seek for a Savior. Uh, we seek for a Savior because we've looked at ourselves and at the world around us and understand uh, we are sinners, okay? And, uh, you know, to remember that the way into forgiveness isn't asserting your own righteousness. The way into to forgiveness and eternal life is admitting that you're a sinner, all right? That uh, 
Jesus came to seek and to save uh, that which was lost. He came to seek sinners, not the righteous, okay? The Pharisees couldn't accept what Jesus had to say uh, because they were asserting their own righteousness. Luke uh, 5.32, Jesus said, I've come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Luke 18, 9 through 14, uh, is this, this story that Jesus told about the two men who went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and prayed this proud prayer. And it says he prayed to himself and said, God, <laughs> Interesting, okay? Uh, he's, but he prayed and said, oh, I'm so righteous and I'm so grateful that you made me this way. And this tax collector said he smote his breast and wouldn't even raise his eyes and said, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said it was that one that went down to his house justified, not the other. Okay, so, um, you know, saving faith produces righteousness by faith, okay? Because the first part of, of, of our righteousness is what God gives to us in Christ, okay? Abraham believed God and was reckoned to him as righteousness, and over in, uh, that's in Galatians 3, 6, Romans 3, 20 through 24, says, because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. It goes on to say that the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ, okay? And, uh, and again, this reminder that we fall short you know, we are not righteous in and of ourselves. We are not intrinsically righteous. You know, I have some uh, weights that I use for weightlifting down in the basement. They don't try to be heavy. They are heavy. Uh, they don't have to try. Okay? That you have to try to be righteous says you are not intrinsically righteous. And as that is not your nature, that's something you're trying to be. All right? And over to Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it reminds us that by grace we've been saved through faith and that not of ourselves is the gift of God, not of works. All right? So our righteousness, our salvation that is imparted to us comes by God's grace through faith. Okay, Romans 1, 17 says, The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. The righteous person lives by faith. Okay? Your salvation is a gift. It's received by grace through faith. It has nothing to do with your works. All right? So, you know, that righteousness has been imparted to you uh, by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Uh, all right? That's what saves you. You know, it's not, it's not anything else. But, but, you know, there, there is an attitude of righteousness that causes us uh, to, to desire to live righteously to glorify God, to please Him, okay? Just try to figure out what's pleasing to God and just do it. Luke 1.17, uh, you know, says that uh, John the Baptist was sent to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children that, that disobedient to the attitude of the righteous, okay? And so that we'd be a people prepared for the Lord. So are you prepared for the Lord? It's an interesting thought, question to ask yourself. And uh, Jesus said, we're the light of the world and that, that we should let our, our, our deeds shine, so people can see them, that they would give glory to God, all right? So, so there is this, this thing where we have this attitude in our heart that desires to be pleasing to God. We will not be successful in being completely righteous, but that desire to be pleasing to God is what motivates us, you know, to do these righteous deeds. And uh, so Ephesians 5, 8 through 11 uh, says that, uh, that we are to be light in the Lord, and that we're supposed to be trying to learn what's pleasing to the Lord. And Philippians 1, 9 through 11, we're getting down to close to the end here, and it says this, And this I pray, all right, that, uh, that your love may abound more and more in real knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere, blameless until the day of Christ, having been filled with the fruit of righteousness which comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And so there's these two parts to our righteousness, that which is imparted to us from God is by his grace through faith, and that which is the result of the attitude that that produces in us, and it becomes this thing that people see in us, and it gives them reason to look to God. The breastplate, along with being something that protected our upper body, was also one of the ways a person was identified in combat. Their helmet and the breastplate, you could see them from a distance, and it was obvious who they were. All right, And so uh, this breastplate of righteousness that God tells us to put on to be prepared for battle says that we should be obvious about our desire to be pleasing to God and the way that it causes us to live. And so I'm going to say with that, God bless you, and we'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summary.